Kills and Thrills. How are you doing, mate? Uh, hello, mate. I didn't expect to be online so quickly. I literally just clicked the link and boom, here I am. I'm not too bad, mate. Yourself? I'm good. Um, obviously, the discussion topic is on the two rides. Like I said, hopefully, fingers crossed, Wednesday or Thursday, I'll be down there for the Mardi Gras event to give a closer look into the sites. But uh, let's start with Jewel, first of all. Then, obviously, Horns House anniversary this year. I think, I mean, you rode it recently. I'm going to be hopefully yeah. riding it uh, uh, this week. How 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 did it operate for you, if you can go into a bit of detail? Because I knew for me in the first weekend of the season, it did better than previous years, but still needed a lot of work. It's strange, mate, because right at the start of the season, when I first went, it must have been two or three days after opening the start of the season, I went in, blasters are working great, all the effects were working. It kind of, I wouldn't say it looked refreshed, but it was certainly more vibrant than it has been, and the, the guns were working perfectly, which is rare in itself. Fast forward well, to now, to this week when I went, like, over the last few days, and effects aren't working, blasters are jamming and not even registering scores. They've got a lot of effects that are just out of action. Obviously, you've got the sad state of the tunnel that's just been in disrepair for, for many, many seasons now. You've got things on the floor which just haven't been tidied up. You've got the ride operators saying that they're not just kind of leaving stuff up in the air at the moment. It just seems as though they're leaving it to wreck and ruin, which normally is when Alton Towers are in the process of updating something that's been dilapidated for example so there has been some, when i posted the video a few days ago talking about it someone actually messaged and said that they saw somebody with plans chatting outside a duel that could be anything it really could it could be someone talking about plans at a completely different area of the park they just so happened to be standing outside of duel it would be nice to see it updated though and as you probably saw the photo of the two skeletons and that dress table and the entrance that was surfacing on social media why go through the effort of doing that? Is it a little hint that something's coming? Is it just the write-ups have got a bit bored and added that as a laugh? Who knows? But um, it'll be good to see uh, some work done because it, it desperately needs it. But like I said in the comments, it's Merlin. So what are we <laughs> going to expect? I'm nervous. Yeah, I think it's going to be a guessing game at this stage until we see anything official come out of the park. I think that if there's any ride right now that needs a refurbishment, it is probably Jewel and it's been needing it for a good three, four, maybe even yeah. five years minimum. Um, in terms of if this will be refurbished, what kind of refurbishment are you expecting from this potentially? Are you expecting something minor like it was with the Towers of and Care programme a few years back? Or are you expecting hopefully like a what Chessington did with Hocus Pocus Hall, which is like an overhaul of the whole thing, but maybe not with an IP. I'd love to see an overhaul without an IP because I remember that the TLC thing was literally just a lick of UV paint, wasn't it? And it was like, oh, <laughs> oh it looks it looks so beautiful, you know. We, we, as the Alton Towers fans who have seen that ride in such a bad state for so long, even something like UV paint got us all excited about seeing this kind of like <laughs> revival, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, in terms of the, I'd like to see an overhaul, I mean, Merlin have got the, the know-how, they've got the theme in, they just need to invest and that's something that Alton Towers may struggle, especially with how expensive the retract's going to be. Clearly SW9's in the works, that's been going on for quite some time now, so there's money set aside for that. We know what Merlin are capable of with Jumanji at Gardaland. Yes, there is still a few niggles with that ride, but it's, in terms of theming, it's probably one of their biggest, if not the biggest like grand scale dark ride that they've ever done they've got the potential to do something like that but where which kind of avenue they go down family thrill or back to old school haunted house who knows but i'd love to see an overhaul brand new effects and um, just put some effort in because alton towers like I say they just leave stuff to rack a room just put some effort in that this is your flagship park it is the merlin flagship park of the uk whether you like it or not it really is in terms of investment so just put some effort in and show the UK you mean business and put a dark ride on the grand scale, on the grand stage of the world. You know, a big dark ride, big investment, whether it happens now or in five years time, I don't care. Just get something done in dual. Yeah. I, and in terms of, I mean, obviously we're sort of talking about this refer potential refurbishment. I mean, like we said, it's been a long time coming, you know, and, and we sort of talk about how the Haunted House anniversary is this year. Hmm. I mean, is it, can it, could it be great if they sort of went back to the old Haunted House, but reinvest it in a modern way? So maybe not take the guns off and just revert it back to what it was before 2003, but maybe just 
you know, completely overhaul it, but change it back to the haunted house story and maybe put the backstory back into the rags. We saw them, the backstory screens taken out with the Towers of Living Gad program. So maybe bring the backstory back into the ride. Yeah, exactly. That that would be something really cool. I mean, if you're going to keep the lasers, don't go on a Disney level and put in a Buzz Lightyear ride, for example, because that's probably the best example of a laser gun ride that I've ever experienced. Completely yeah. immersive, you know, where the laser gun becomes like an attachment of yourself and it's kind of immersing you into the experience. Whereas as Jewel, it's basically the same as me and you going in a shopping trolley with two guns going through a little scare maze. You know what I mean? It's it's not it's not really it's not really the same experience, but. If they're going to stick with laser guns, drag us into the story. Make sure it's not just shooting at just random Halloween props that you can buy from the range. Make sure it immerses you in the experience you're going through. If you're getting rid of the guns, make that experience much scarier. Make it make it something special. Even adding sort of better animatronics and stuff like that. Just anything just to give it a, a bit of a boost and uh, get those queues up again because Jewel rarely has anything longer than a 20-minute queue. So to see it refurbished and on even 30, 40, 50 minutes, even though it'll be a longer wait for us, it'll still be an attraction worth queuing for. Cross fingers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we'll see what the jury is out on Jewel between now and the end of the season. Um Sticking now with the second one, Enterprise, I think it's pretty much all clear from every angle. But I mean, I mean, there was, I mean, it's pretty clear it's going to go. Yeah, mate, if you look at it now, it reminds me of the wheel that you see on the Chernobyl pictures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in a really bad shape. I think Chernobyl, the Chernobyl wheel is actually in a better state than Enterprise right now. Yeah. And that's, and that's vertical. That's, that's, that's vertical. Yeah, exactly. That's that's still, exactly. That's still up. It doesn't. It's allowed to go vertical. It's allowed to stay vertical. <laughs> you know. But enterprise. I can't see it coming back. If you're getting rid of it, replace it with a newer model. If you're going to keep that sort of enterprise, you think. But as soon as the height board came down, it's like. Have they gone to leak signs to get a new sign? Then you look over the fence. Why has it been fenced off? There's multiple things pointing towards it going. It's, it'll be a shame. I uh, just hope they don't turn it into another picnic space like they did with uh, Fountain Square, for example, where the Wave Swinger used to be. I don't want another picnic space. Yes, the views will be cool of Oblivion coming out uh, of the, the tunnel whilst you're eating a sandwich or two, but we need flat rides, mate. We, we don't need fun fair rides that are on loan. Funk and fly, bless its little cotton socks, had to be sent back to its owner because we'd worn it out. So we had to get a new model in. Stop wearing out the fun fair rides. Invest in a permanent flat. And it clearly works. It clearly disperses the queue. Otherwise, they wouldn't have brought them back again for another season. Just get some investment in there. But like I said, with the, the, the backlog of investments that Alton Towers have got, it might be some time until we see a permanent flat we might have to do with retro squad rides for two, maybe even three more seasons. Yeah, I think that's more than likely the case. I think, I, I mentioned this before, I think a few forums mentioned things like the Zampilla Endeavours, the Tivoli Warp model, um there's there's models out there you could replace it with i know i said about the nebulas you know drake man's investing one this year so that won't be the case with alton towers if they're going to go for a flat ride replacement um and as you mentioned about picnic spaces submissions memorial gun which is now obviously spin jam um yeah we just want to see i mean this sort of links all everything with jewel everything with enterprise just links to back to alton towers and investment what is their future plan because i don't think we've seen a 10-year plan for alton towers or a long-term development plan for Alton Towers since that old one like five ten years ago that's barely been mentioned about and there's some rides that are still there now it would be nice to see something like that from Alton Towers the part that strung uh, sprung straight to my mind as soon as you mentioned that was Drayton it's like right we've got a new logo not everyone agrees with it but this is our plan this is our demographic this is the themed area we're doing this is what's coming next we're getting a coaster next year we know exactly what's happening like it, it hasn't been officially announced with the new coaster, but there's there's markings there, there's stuff going on. You're constantly mm. seeing developments in that park, whereas Alton Towers is just like yeah, all the time. It's just it's thank unfortunately living next to the park and the amount of times that I go, it's it's disappointing to see. Like it's a lovely park, don't get me wrong. But yeah. if you if you go if, if you've been for like the first time in months, obviously, you can appreciate it for what it is. If I go daily, you can kind of spot all the bits that need attention, all the things that they're missing out on, all the things that they're, they're leaving and, and should be repairing or fixing. It's it's a shame. It's a shame. 
Yeah, and like I said, on Wednesday or Thursday, hopefully, if this trip gets greenlit, I can. Uh, I'm going to be going around all the different sites of develop potential development in every single area of the park, just to put a little video together, just to show them exactly what needs work. But um, overall, then, I mean, Enterprise obviously been here since the start, pretty much. Jewel's been here uh, since the Haunted House days in 1992. Two historic attractions, one pretty much on the way out, one on the verge of going out potentially uh, with the murmurings and the rumours. Again, uh, do we look at 2023 season as maybe the year that we see something happen to one of these two sites or both of these sites? Or do you think it'll be just uh, an off year for focusing on the events and maybe some more family rides? Uh, I think with 2023, we're going to get a, an indication of what the next steps are for the park, I think. I think an enterprise announcement, like you mentioned earlier on in the show, is is more than likely. I'd, I'd put money on it that we'd probably get that announcement. I think 2023 with the Nemesis retrack, I definitely think Forbidden Valley is going to be an area of focus. There's going to be something in that area to keep us occupied whilst Nemesis. It's the only way to get footfall. Depends on how they corner it all off. It's going to be harder to get down to Galactica. They need something to draw people there. There's a lot of activity in the Subterra building, but this is all murmurings. It could be to do with Scarefest, we have no idea, but it would be nice to have something going on around there to keep us drawn to Forbidden Valley whilst Nemi's having all the work done to it. But um, maybe that's where Jewel comes into play. It's, it's celebrating an anniversary. We haven't seen anything to show any indication that it'll be involved in Scarefest because it'd either be out of action now or there'd be some sort of updates or something that we would have seen already with October being. Well, it's not too far away now, is it, mate? So we would have seen something by now. But, uh, yeah, I think there might be something added, a little mini celebration of sorts. But uh, in terms of Jewel, uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing anything for a little bit this year. But uh, who knows? I'm very hopeful that because literally if, about a week ago, I saw scaffolding at the bottom of Tower Street. Three days later, it's that be big, beautiful stage that a big Teddy's now dancing in front of. They could turn it around. So who knows? Keep your head back. Hold on tight. You must escape. 